Blessed be all you wonderful subscribers out there and people new to my channel. If you are new to the channel, uh, please do subscribe. Today we're going to be talking about the things that you need to think about when you are doing magic on behalf of another person. But before we dive into that, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path. And if you want to do just that, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you do want a copy of that book, Crafting Your Wiccan Path, so that you can connect more to nature, spirit and magic through the practices of witchcraft. The link is in the description field below this video. When people find out that you practice witchcraft, if they're people who are excited about the fact you practice witchcraft or just curious about it, you're probably going to come across a lot of people who want you to do spells for them. Or you may even come across situations where you want to do spells on behalf of somebody else because they may be going through a difficult time, they may be looking for a job, they may be trying to grow their business or they may need some healing and you want to do a spell for them. It's not that much different to do a spell for another person as it is to do a spell on yourself. You just need to approach it coming from a different position. So when you do the spell itself, it's pretty much the same thing that you do for yourself. The materials will be the same. What's different is what you write on the petition, if you're doing a petition spell, what you write on the candle, if you're doing a candle spell. Even the color of the candle may be different if you are working with multiple candles, with a multiple candle spell and you're using an astral candle you'd be using that to correspond to their zodiac uh, sun sign or rising sign rather than your own. But if you're just doing a single candle spell, then the color is probably going to be the same as what you'd use if it's a spell for yourself. So as far as the spell itself is concerned, uh, the ingredients and even the process of the spell, it's not going to be any different. Generally speaking, it's going to be the same process. All that is different is that you are addressing it and trying to entangle the energy with somebody else and not yourself. And so this is why it's a good idea if you can have some kind of a link to the person you're doing the magic for. So if it's a friend, for example, and you're doing a spell to help them get a job, for example, you will want preferably something that belongs to them that you can use in the spell. So if you're doing a candle spell, it would be helpful if you can somehow incorporate uh, maybe something that belongs to them in the spell with you uh, near the candle or even um, as part of the candle if you're making the candle yourself. So that can be anything from the person's um, hair, skin cells, uh, or an object that they wear, a lot like a, some sort of item of jewellery or something. A photograph you can still use as a link. It's probably not as quite as, um, as connected as actually an item that person has actually entangled themselves with, literally, uh, like hair or, or jewellery. But it is a closer thing than not having anything at all. And if you don't even have that, then you can certainly just use their name. In Reiki, when we're doing distance Reiki, we will often just work with the person's name and where they live to send the Reiki and then hopefully visualize that person while we're sending it. So it's not that you have to have a link, it's just the links will actually can make or break the spell, like they can be what actually stops the spell from being effective if you don't have the right link. Um, but not always, so magic isn't always the same with how it works. So you need to have that connection to the person you're doing the work for. When you're doing your spell, you want to incorporate their name into the spell itself so that you're directing the spell towards that person. And when you're doing your, your intention and your focus on the spell, you want to be focusing on that person. So you want to see that person with the result. And as you're watching in your mind's eye or listening in your mind's ear to that person having already achieved what it is that you're doing the spell for, so if it's your friend looking for a job, maybe you see them um, 
working in the type of job that they want to work at. Uh, you see them talking about how great their job is and how they're enjoying this great new job. Uh, visualize them actually having already achieved what it is that you're helping them achieve. And then when it comes to the emotional element, you want to work with your emotional response to seeing them having achieved what they want to achieve. Because the emotion is the, the energy, of course, behind the spell, so it, but it needs to be your emotion because you're the one doing the spell. So focus, have a little moment and just imagine how you feel seeing your friend in the job of their dreams. Because you're going to have an emotional reaction to seeing your friend in that, that situation. Because if they're happy and joyful, you're probably going to feel happy and joyful too. Maybe not as much as they are, but you're certainly going to feel a sense of um, appreciation for uh, the fact that they're happy and they're enjoying what they're doing. So when you're focusing the energy, uh, whether you're doing the mantra, whether you're actually saying the spell, or you're dancing, or however you like to, to raise energy and get the energy going, it's your emotions and your emotional response to experiencing their result. And that's the main difference when it comes to doing spells on behalf of another person. It's just understanding there's just that different way that you go about uh, doing the spell compared to how you do it if it was yourself. Everything else is pretty much the same. All you need to do is just be aware of the slight variation in seeing them having it, but you feeling your response instead of their response, if that makes sense. So spells can be complicated. And if you want to get better at being a spellcaster, I do have the free uh, spellcaster checklist that you can download from my website. The link is in the description field below this video. It's called the spellcaster checklist, and it just gives you a list of things to think about and to consider when you're planning your spells. Because there's, there's spells and there's spells, essentially. And sometimes you just need to have a plan instead of just going off and shooting off spells and then maybe wondering why they're not working the way you'd like them to work. So if you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.